everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be learning how to block granny squares. Now I have about 80 granny squares here um, all for my half triangle granny square video and you can click right here if you'd like to see um, the half square triangle granny video I did a couple of weeks back here on my channel. I have tons of these squares ready to be assembled into a blanket, but first I need to block all of them. And by blocking, I mean we need to get them to be all the same size. Now all these that I'm showing here have already been blocked, and you can see here that they're stacking up nice and even, and everything looks to be uh, matching up nicely. We have a very square shape here, everything is nice and even, very symmetrical, and it looks great and it's ready to be assembled. Now this one I have here has not been blocked yet and we can see a very clear difference in the size and the shape between these two squares. Now I wanted to show you matching colors and in the same orientation so that you can um, definitely differentiate from the blocked one. Here's the blocked on the right and the unblocked on the left. So here we can see it's very kind of wavy and bumpy. It's not lying flat perfectly it's just got a lot of puckering and it's also smaller than the blocked piece so once we block everything it's going to stretch it out just a touch and it's going to just make things nice and linear we can see here that the unblocked uh, piece also has very rounded edges it doesn't have a nice perfect square with straight edges and nice corners uh, liked the blocked one does. So here are just a bunch of reasons for blocking. We want things to be flat. We want things to be a perfect square. Here's another one that's been blocked and we can see here it looks much more like the one on the right than the one on the left as it's already been blocked and is looking great and ready for assembly. Now it doesn't have to be completely perfect, perfect straight edges, completely crisp 90 degree angles. It is still a crochet piece and it is still uh, made with yarn. So it's not going to be uh, exactly perfect but it will be a whole lot better and a whole lot easier to assemble and your finished piece will look a lot better. So we also want to make sure that we're blocking so that our finished crochet project did not get hours and hours and hours spent on it and then the finished product is kind of wavy and uneven. Now I do have a secret for blocking crochet granny squares and my secret is the Chet Nanigans blocking board. Now this is a wooden blocking board. You can see here I have a bunch of squares on it at the moment and this is a nice easy lightweight portable board um, that is made for blocking granny squares. That is its only purpose and these guys over at Chet Nanigans do the absolute best job um, of any blocking boards I've seen on the market. You can't get these at you know, your local craft store. They are an artisanal product and they are made so, so well. And I've just been so impressed with this product and this company overall. Now the way that this works is it has holes drilled into it at different increments, um, perfectly measured, and then you have these little uh, metal kind of spikes that you stick down into the holes and they are movable. So you can take those spikes in and out to position them in all different sorts of configurations for all different size and shaped granny squares. Now, um, it's very, very easy to put this board together and get using it. I took it right out of the box and put my squares on it. It took absolutely no time at all to learn to use and it has just been a complete lifesaver, uh, especially making as many granny squares as I have. I have about 80 for this project um, and that was a lot of hours of crocheting and I want to make sure that all of these squares look great. So having this blocking board has really changed the game as far as making all of my work worthwhile. So here I'm just going to slip these off of the spikes. You can see that no yarn is catching and everything slips right off and doesn't adjust in size, which is great. It doesn't come off and then shrivel back up. Um, and you can see here just how easy it is to remove the little poles that we're using. Very smooth metal, it's not gonna catch on any of your yarn. I also wanted to test out this product with the um, granny squares that I made using the Lion Brand New Basic 175 yarn. Now this yarn is a wool and acrylic blend, so it does fuzz up and it is more likely to catch on surfaces that are not smooth. Um, and I kind of, did that on purpose, picked a yarn that wasn't going to be the easiest to put on something like a wooden blocking board, it might catch. We can see here that these are all identical in size and looking perfect. Because I wanted to test out this board to make sure that it wasn't going to catch on different types of yarn and ruin my project. But it is so smooth, these little metal poles are great. 
I've got two different sizes here. They have short ones for the smaller boards and then longer ones for the larger board. This is one of their larger boards. I will have it linked in the description box below for you to go check out on their website and on Etsy. Um, but yeah, this board is just amazing. It's super lightweight. They've glazed it with this beautiful uh, shiny wood finish. And oh my goodness, the, the wood itself has beautiful grain, but the shine on the top it just gives it such a stunning finish and it's not going to grab at your yarn. It's completely smooth here. I'm going to rub some fuzzy yarn over it. Nothing catches, nothing frays, and it has no negative effect on my yarn, which is amazing because if I were to have my uh, dad or my fiance go out in the garage and make me a wooden blocking board, I can tell you two things for sure. Number one, the craftsmanship is not going to be like this. I love my dad and my fiance, but these guys make these boards all day long and they are definitely way beyond what your dad can make in the garage. And number two, the measurements of these holes are completely perfect. I mean, everything here on the upper right hand quadrant is a half inch. So these Holes have a half inch space between all of them. All the other holes have a one inch space and everything is so perfectly measured, which is really important because we want all of our squares to be blocked the same. So just super, super craftsmanship with these Chet Nanigans boards and I don't know where I would be without it. There are a lot of other ways to block your crochet projects, but for me, I'm going to be using this thing forever. I mean... I will never block on anything else. So if you do granny square projects often, definitely invest in one of these. I also wanted to demonstrate how these poles don't catch on your yarn either. Um, they're really, really smooth and the ends aren't sharp or going to catch on anything. They're really easy to put into the little pegs um, and everything is just super simple. So I'm going to show you how I block this particular square. Now we want to make sure we get the sizing right here. So we're between 3 and 4 inches. So this is a 4 inch gap between these holes. So that's 4 inches here. And my square is looking like it's just smaller than 4 inches. If I were to stretch it just a tad, it would be 4 inches exactly. Now I could go over to 5 inches, but that's going to really stretch things out too much. I can go up here to the half inch markings. Um, and do a four and a half inch, but that's still going to stretch things out quite a bit. Um, and I'm not quite sure that I want things stretched that much because it's going to create a lot of gapping here between the stitches. So I'm just going to stick with a four inch measurement. Now you can play with this and decide how you want to do it, but keep in mind once you block your square, you cannot unblock it. So here I'm going to put in my pegs with, uh, four inch spaces. Make sure that you have four inches all the way around. You're not stretching in a rectangle shape. So here I have a four inch block kind of pegged out. Here are where my dowels are. It's kind of difficult to see on the camera. Now if you want to you can spritz this with a little bit of water and then allow it to dry on the blocking board. I didn't need to do that just because this yarn did a good job of blocking. I tested with a couple of squares before I did all of them and this particular yarn blocked really well and held its shape. Um, so I didn't feel the need to spritz it but if you want to that is an extra step that's really going to create a solid um, block that's not going to shrivel back up and become unblocked. So if you want to just spritz it lightly, don't douse it with water, but just spritz it lightly. Now I've got it on the blocks or on the pegs and I'm just going to push it down. And we can see how tall these pegs are. I could stack these squares all the way up, um, but everything is nice and stretched out just a tad. We don't want huge gapping between the squares um, or between the stitches, I'm sorry. We just want a nice kind of stretched square finish. So everything here is looking perfect. We can go ahead and stack up as many squares as we need. We can also on this larger board put um, several spots with these poles for um, blocking stacks and stacks of squares all at once, which is really nice. You can finish the job a lot faster. But their uh, smaller boards as well, the Chet Nanigan smaller boards, are great too. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to leave this square blocked on here probably overnight. Um, I did mine when I did all of these squares. I did them in batches. Um, 
and I left them overnight and they have not altered in shape and they've been sitting off the blocking board for several days. So you don't have to stitch them up as soon as they're blocked. I wouldn't want to leave them too long because they may become misshapen again. Um, but definitely leave them on the blocking board overnight or so. Um, I also wanted to show you Chet Nanigans has given me an extra board to give away to you guys. Can you believe that? So there is a mini board here and it's a little bit smaller than my board. I'm going to move my board out of the way and show you this mini board. Now same craftsmanship, same um, amazing finish on this beautiful wood, same precise measurements and just it, the same amazing product in a mini kind of portable version and you can see here uh, the same granny square compared to this board. It is a lot smaller but honestly this one you can put anywhere. You can fit it in a drawer. It's going to be perfect for blocking all your granny squares. Now this one's set up a little bit differently. There is a square shape of holes and then kind of this starburst coming out from the square shape. And what that's going to allow you to do is block all different shapes and sizes of granny squares all the way up to eight inches. So I have my shorter um, little metal pegs here that will come with the board when you order it or uh, this giveaway will come with these pegs. And now I'm going to show you how I would block these same granny squares on the mini board. So we have a four inch uh, square here. Utilizing that starburst shape, we can go all the way up, up to eight inches, which is great. I don't know that I've ever made a granny square larger than eight inches. So this definitely will cover a lot of needs, but if you did make one that was even eight inches uh, in size, we would just place the pegs here in all of the furthest holes and that's an eight inch block. But for now I'm going to show you how I would block my squares which are four inches here on the mini board. So you don't have to make a huge investment in one of the larger boards if you want to try out a really really nice high quality blocking board and save a few dollars this mini board is a great option and as you can see it's going to block my squares just as well as the larger board is. So I definitely recommend trying out a Chet Nanigans board and this mini one is great. I do have a coupon code for the Chet Nanigans um, website which is linked in the description box below and I also have the giveaway code or I'm sorry, the coupon code in the description box below there too. So make sure to use that um, to save yourself a few dollars on one of these awesome blocking boards. Now for the giveaway, we do have a giveaway for this mini board here pictured um, and the little pegs that come with it. One lucky winner will be getting the Chet Anigans board and pegs um, completely free shipped to you. So make sure that you go to the link in the description box below or click the screen right now to enter that giveaway. It will close in about two weeks, so make sure that you follow everything you need to do in order to enter yourself for this giveaway. It's such an awesome product and I hope that you you guys really enjoy it and I hope you learned a lot from this blocking video. Make sure to go shop with Chet Nanigans at the link in the description box below. Thanks for watching!